Welcome to Ladies Talking Leafs. I'm Chris. And I'm Syl. And I think I may have jinxed the Florida Panthers last night on uh, Saturday night when they could have won the cup, but of course they lost big time to the Oilers. And the reason why I say that is because when I was writing the show notes, I was thinking, okay, do I, off the top, am I going to mention about the cup final? Like just say congrats or what? And then I thought, oh, then I stopped myself. So anyways, there is going to be another game. So We'll uh, we'll see about that. We'll get into that in a second. Um, but first of all, we want to let you know that the NHL and NBA seasons are coming to a close, but you will still want to check out Bet Online as your number one source for all your sports betting needs this summer. From baseball, golf, soccer, right to all the top fights in UFC, MMA, and boxing. Every stat, every matchup, and even live odds and spreads while the games are being played. When the game's over, head on over to our online casino and get in on a game of blackjack or poker or unwind with one of our over 150 slot games. So head to the website today, betonline.ag, or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Bet online, the game starts here. So please gamble responsibly. If you or someone you know needs support or advice, you can reach out to Connex Ontario or an organization near you. Place your limits and stay within it. Okay, so a few NHL updates uh, to note from uh, Commissioner Gary Bettman's media availability during the Stanley Cup final. Uh, the salary cap is going up. That's good news. Uh, up to up four and a half million from 83 and a half to 88 million for, for next season, 2024, 25. And it was also announced that the NHL will host their own international event, the Four Nations Face Off Tournament from fe- February 12th to the 20th. And this will replace next year's All Star game. So, um, the cap, I mean, that's, that's good news for every team, obviously. Yeah, but um, very, very good news for the Leafs. For the Leafs. We need every every dime that we can get. Yeah. And um, we'll get into a little bit more of the cap situation later on in the show with the with the upcoming draft and UFA's um, free agency. But um, that Four Nations Cup is interesting. I, it's going to be fun to finally have an international event, mm-hmm. even, though, even though David Pasternak isn't going to be a part of it because no they, yeah they don't have enough czech players to make a team because it's uh canada finland sweden and the u.s right so yeah and i guess that you know that's to do it with nhl players the only way they could really incorporate players like that is if they kind of do what they did the last world cup where they had you know like a like a team europe or a world team type of thing you know and they've yeah. they tried to do that some t- a few times with all-star games as well um, you know, world versus North America or that type of thing. Um, but you know, unfortunately we're not going to have, there's going to be a lot of good players that are not going to be involved, but it'll still be an interesting event. And I think it's just a uh, USA, Canada, Sweden, and Finland, uh, to start with. And this is the first incarnation and it could grow and they could add more teams to it. Um, you know, in the future, I would think as well. And it's ho- being hosted by in Montreal and Boston, the, the mm-hmm. two cities that are going to host it. So that'll yeah. be good. And um, yeah, yeah, I'm actually kind of glad that some of the the distraction is moving away from from Toronto <laughs> for next season. Yeah. So another thing the NHL announced uh, was an untitled docu series coming this fall on Prime Video. The series will have interviews with key players, their families, uh, teammates, rivals to show what life is like on and off the ice for the league's top players. I'm super excited about this. It's being uh, created by the same people that did uh, the Formula One Drive to Survive. And I believe there's a tennis one that they've done and as well a golf um, docuseries as well. Uh, but the Drive to Survive basically completely reinvigorated uh, Formula One and brought in uh, a lot of new fans to the sport. Um, so I'm sure this is going to be way better than the the previous Amazon series that, that was done on the Leafs. Um, so That's what yeah. I was going to say. I hope it's better <laughs> than the all or nothing. Uh, yeah, no, I think yeah. it's going to be uh, really, really good. I'm actually quite excited for it. And it's going to have some behind the scenes stuff like throughout the playoffs as well. They're following players um, during that time. Um, 
I believe that one of the Leafs that is going to be pretty prominently highlighted is going to be Willie. Um, so yeah, he's coming a real rock star. So I'm he's really made, he's made for this type of a hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm interested in, in seeing, um, you know, a little bit about, uh, what he does when, you know, we're, we're not watching. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What so, makes him ticks a little. What yeah. Make him, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But, uh, and, the, the other yeah, players ahead. though, just to mention too, are, mm-hmm. are Connor McDavid, uh, Matthew Kachuk, yeah. Pasternak, uh, Jeremy Swayman, the Bruins goalie, uh, and Quinn Hughes of mm-hmm. Vancouver are going to be featured, um, on on this so um and i think there'll be other players as well because there'll be interactions and stuff like that too so um you know talking to teammates and stuff as well so um one thing i forgot though with amazon prime that they they acquired the right because they're getting more into the hockey Mm -hmm. i guess um tv part of it and and they acquired the rights from sportsnet for the uh for it's called it's the monday Monday yeah it's the monday nights yeah yeah so that'll be interesting to see as we go along with mm-hmm. uh, with the partnership with Sportsnet and the NHL and now this prime video coming into it, seeing how that's yeah. going to go. But Yeah. yeah. Oh, all right. So another quick programming note. Um, our next show is going to be July 3rd, and that is going to be our first patio season episode. Um, we'll be talking Leafs all summer long. So be sure to hit that follow button uh, wherever you listen to our show. And now it's time for us to get into this episode. And we're going to start things off with our Leaf Talk segment, uh, where we have a grab bag of items to discuss. And then we're going to roll out the Ladies Talking Leafs highlight reel with our top three moments of the 2023-24 season. And then for our third period segment um, with the NHL draft and free agency coming up in a couple of weeks, um, we're going to be giving our thoughts on what players the Leafs might be looking at adding to their prospect pool and roster for the next season. So without any further ado, let's talk Leafs. Okay, so um, it took a while, um, but... The Leafs have finally announced that um, both assistant coaches Dean Chenoweth and uh, Guy Boucher will not be returning next season. Um, so only Mike Ben Ryan still remains as an assistant with the Leafs um, from last year's staff right now anyways. And we figure that he will be staying since Craig Berube already has that relationship with him from, from the St. Louis Blues. Um, but they did announce uh, former New York Islanders head coach Lane Lambert has been hired as an associate coach. I w- I just figured when I was reading the articles about it, I was like, oh, I didn't realize it, that there was this difference. Not an assistant coach, he's an associate mm-hmm. coach, which apparently is seen as a slight step up from an assistant. So, um, so yeah, um, I read into it a little bit because he was fired basically in, on from the Islanders this season and that Patrick Roth took over for for him basically right so um but yeah no he he's a former nhl player and i think from what i read it's the dynamics that they i think that the that the leafs were and craig berube were attracted to because he was formerly under barry trotz in um with the capitals Mm -hmm. so uh and when they won the stanley cup in 2018 so i think the way they said it was that he's more of a I guess a player friendly coach, whereas obviously Craig Berube, he may not be so friendly <laughs> with so the players. So he's, he's the foil. He's yeah, the like foil. He's going to be dressing room to massage yeah. the yeah. situation in case there is some feathers ruffled. Right. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. um, so yeah. And another thing, I guess his style that they, that I read about his style is that he's more of a shoot first mentality not necessarily to look for the best shot which might be a good thing because we tend the Leafs for many seasons now have tended to overpass right but um but yeah and it, but he's um he, he's more like that but then because of that um I guess the defense on the Islanders was brutal apparently <laughs> and they gave up a lot of third period le- leads that they had but then when you think of that, like Craig Berube style will kind of balance that, balance that out. I'm thinking anyways, or at least we hope. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I, I kind of think in, in some ways, you know, their objective is similar when it comes to offense, because that's exactly kind of what, you know, he wants is like a North South 
type of, of, you know, style, right. a brew bay that is. Um, but he's obviously going to, you know, be more looking for the, the 200 foot type of game. So, um, anyway, I think it's gonna, it's good to have, uh, you know, a collaboration, um, like that. And, um, and like you and said, obviously Berube has to be in on the decision too. It's his, he's working with. Him, well, yeah. Right? So, yeah. Yeah. So I think he's obviously going to be the architect of kind of getting the guys that he wants in place. And I assume that he will handle his coaching staff, just like he wants to handle the players in, in that they will have clear cut roles. So, and that's the way they're going to work it. Right. So He's going to bring all these different guys to the table. So I wonder now that they officially parted ways with Guy Boucher, if that is, leaves the door open for Mark Savard to come on board. Um, I don't know, but I, I, I took a long time with that, with yeah. the decision though, like mm-hmm. for it to be, I don't know. I don't know. Cause there is well, still, you, I don't know, maybe cause, um, what's the other assistant's name that left? He went to coach, um, Abbotsford in Vancouver. The, um, oh, Malhotra? Yeah. Yeah. Manny Malhotra? Technically, there's two spots open. Let's just right. say Guy, Guy Boucher and Manny Malhotra gone. Mm-hmm. But whether or not they fill both spots, because I mean, that bench was pretty well, loaded back I th- there. I think people. that they're, they're probably looking for their specialty teams, guys. And though these, yeah. I'm, I'm glad then that they're taking their time with this because those two hires are crucial. Yeah. literally that is the those are the areas that we cannot they cannot mess up you know picking the wrong guys for those um spots i think so um i'm sure the other thing is that because the stanley cup finals are still ongoing i know that they kind of snuck in the Guy Boucher thing over the weekend and that's probably because you know gary Bettman doesn't want anything distracting from all of the the final you know games yeah. um i heard i so, heard he actually told teams not to yeah do not any. to make announcements so my guess is that there will be some announcements forthcoming and and it'll be kind of you know coming fast and furious once <laughs> the finals are over which yeah. could be as early as as tuesday but i kind of feel like it might not be anyway oh really all right yeah, so on to some player contract negotiation updates uh, with Tyler Bertuzzi and Max Domi both being focused on by fans and media as they're both UFAs on July 1st. Uh, the latest is we know that both players um, are looking for term. Um, I think it's going to be difficult, though, for them to get that. Um, I, obviously, the Leafs are going to be a little bit wary of giving them too much. But, I mean, a guy like Domi, how much term... Is he going to really, really want? Uh, he basically has been like going year to year to year everywhere he's been for the last, I don't know how many seasons. So for him, two or three years, that is like, you know, home and cooled out pretty much uh, in comparison to what he's been doing the last few. Bertuzzi might be a little bit tougher, um, but I could see them, you know, lining things up with the maximum, say, at around, you know, what Matthew's contract is, which is four years. You know what I mean? Right. Like that right now is their current window technically. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's interesting. I don't know. I, I mean, I prefer for whatever reason, I prefer Bertuzzi. I guess it's more Mm -hmm. because of his physical style. And I mean, they're both 29 years old, um, but I I don't think they're going to be able to sign him. There's too much competition out there. Now I'm hearing like, um, like Nashville is, coming after him maybe even um apparently he had a good relationship with sheldon keefe so new jersey apparently is showing mm-hmm. interest um and also going possibly going back to detroit mm-hmm. right so i mean with all those teams i just think i'm starting to think you know he's and it's his right to do that like he he can get sure. more money and term with those other teams and whatever well, i mean it was it was nice to have that physicality in front of the net and in the playoffs he's definitely a playoff player that way um yeah but i mean i still expected more during the regular season i did mm-hmm. but in the playoffs i think he played well with uh, with matthews and uh and i Domi. still think i not not as well as you did the year before with boston 
in their first in their one series. Yeah. I so I don't know. I I he always looked like he's working hard out there. Yeah. So there's that. Yeah. Um. But anyway, but I, in like reality, you said, I think we're we're we need defense first and foremost. So hundred like percent. We, we you know before we give out term and dollars to these guys, mm-hmm. they got to get their the the top four defensemen, one or even two if they can, um, mm-hmm. and a goalie. Like yeah. It's more the back end that's important here, but um, but these two guys, I think Domi is is more likely to take a little bit of a hometown discount to stay here a little, For little sure. bit, right? Just because of his history, like with his dad, obviously with Ty Domi, and just the being part of the Leafs organization is is something that's um that's a part of him. Right. So I just think that um, it just makes more sense that he'll be the one to stay. And um, and I I do think that the coach that we have on board now, um, you know, there's certain players that are not going to want to play for a coach like that. They don't want that, you know, so I'm not saying Bertuzzi is a guy that is going to shy away from that. But I think that's going to come into into play for some of these um, free agents. You know, not every guy is going to be the type of guy that that wants to go through a wall for for a, for a coach. But yeah. I think that Domi is definitely that kind of guy that would do that, would want to be like that. He was like that already, you know. So, um, yeah. So it between the two, I think, like you said, he's probably the more likely of the two to be able to come to some sort of agreement. Yeah. But another player contract, of course, that is still being talked about is Mitch Marner. Um, so in our previous episode, number 21, we went through some trade possibilities. Um, but from recent reports, the Leafs aren't 100% sold or haven't made a decision either way about trading Mitch Marner. Um, and there's all kinds of speculation around the league and with the media and the fans wondering, like, what's going to happen to Mitch and who can... Tr- he really controls the situation um, because of his no movement clause, right? So, I mean, we can, we're going to be talking about this for, I don't know how long. I don't know how he's going to handle it next season. Like if he, like, if he just does play out the season or decide to do that, like it just, it's just going to be constant questions like about it from the media. I mean, he could do what he could do what Willie did, right? Like I'm not talking about it after this. Mm -hmm. Right. And Mm -hmm. hopefully people will listen. But what do you think? Apparently, too, there is a strong like there is the strong possibility that he he will play out the season and then we'll lose him for nothing. What do you think about that? Well, I mean, obviously, that is not (laughs) ideal. Right. I I don't think that that's that Tre Living would want to do that. Like I I I think that they would want it's possible that they won't do anything this summer. But I think that ideally they would like to do what they did with Willie and get him signed by February, March. But if things aren't moving at that point, mm-hmm. I, I personally don't see the Leafs, um, not moving him at the deadline. Not oh, with I- the true living, not with true living's history, what he's been through. And it, you can't get nothing for an asset like that. So, like, I don't so necessarily... you're not of the belief that... Because there has been some talk there is, yeah. like, let him play it out. And then, really, it's the cap space that you're getting. Yeah. That, I mean, I mean, that's not nothing. That's not nothing. Yeah. But it's, but, you know, but we're not getting... We wouldn't be getting any of that for this season, right? So, I don't know. It's... Whatever happens, happens, honestly. And we're going to... No matter what, nothing in this is going to work out to the fans' advantage. Not, not, this is not going to play out any way in which a fan will be happy about it. Um, but, you know, we don't count for a lot. So um, I, I would hope that if he, if they don't move him over the summer at the draft, because I really think that if they don't move him at the draft, it's not going to happen this summer. Uh, that's the ideal place for them to be able to, you know, get something of worth, you know, um, I just feel like, uh, you know, I, I don't see him 
pulling a willy and being able to thrive in those conditions. You know, Nylander, he bumped up his value and he ended up getting more than he would have if he would have signed in the summer. Uh, I, I just don't see Marner handling that kind of roller coaster fan pressure. Uh, you know, he's from here. He doesn't already doesn't handle it well. How's he going to handle it well? In in throughout the season, yeah, Which when is it's why coming I down don't to understand it, yeah, why he wouldn't just get like just give in and and say, "Here's the teams that I would go." It's to. you know why? It's because it's not just him. It's mm-hmm. he has been listening throughout his whole life to his agent and his dad. Those guys are the ones that are working everything, and no matter how much is destroying him. They are those two guys that Darren Ferris and uh, and his dad are not guys to back down to anything. So no matter how, like, you know, I don't know, his mom should step in because if he's being mentally destroyed, how worth it is any of it? I don't know. No, it's- Maybe they think it's worth it to go through all of that mental anguish for a year, you know, to get set up for life or whatever. But I don't know. At some point, he's got to stand up and be a man and just tell them what he wants to do. Yeah, I hope that he does that. I don't know. Like, it's just, yeah, because it hasn't worked, let's just say, with this core, obviously. No. Mm -hmm. And to bring them, like, just in his mind, like, to come back to that and try it again under a different coach, right? Like, I mean... You could say that, I guess, that it's a different coach, but Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I just, well, maybe, maybe Lane Lambert is the guy for him, you know, (laughs) maybe that hire was all totally hired to like help Mitch through the season to get the most out of him. Who knows? Who knows? I don't know, but I mean, we're going to just keep on talking about this as the draft comes in the next couple of weeks and, Mm -hmm. um, and then free agent on July 1st when they can actually start with uh, negotiating. But I mean, but look, if he does what, what Nylander did last year, I'm like all fine with it, you know? Because the longer he, the carrot is dangling, then that could take us pretty far, you know. But um, I just, I just don't see him managing it in the same way. Yeah. So I mean, when it was presented, when I read about the fact that you're getting the salary, obviously, mm-hmm. like that's the benefit. Let's just say if he plays out the season, that's fine. But then you're losing, let's just say, a ninety to hundred point player. And yeah, and how do you replace like, yes, that? Yes, you'll have the money for it, but mm-hmm. how long is it like it's not necessarily the case that you're gonna with that money you're gonna be able to to get that um for the regular season like you need. But the truth is is that we're not gonna replace him replace that in a in a trade either. Like there's we're not getting no. a one for one, you know, bona fide like star. No. No, you know? but you uh, I don't know. It's 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 going to be very interesting, and yeah, he's gonna have to. I mean, he's gonna have to deal with it if he decides to to play out the season. He's and just hopefully he gets some better lessons on how to deal with the media and the answering questions yeah. about it, and 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 just not letting it affect his play. Which, yeah, I mean, if they if he does decide to stay and that is the decision made, I think they're going to have to do what Austin Matthews did, what William Nylander did and say, I'm talking about it in preseason and then we're not talking about it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, as much as this past season for the Leafs was, again, disappointing, um, there were some highlight reel moments to look back on. So it's been a while since we've rolled the ladies talking leaves highlight reel and we miss it so let's roll it 
All right. So uh, there were so many different uh, highlights to choose from from the season. Uh, but coming in at number three, we chose John Tavares's milestone. So from episode eight, uh, here's what we said. So thousand career points, captain consistency, the 98th player in NHL history to reach a thousand points. Uh, in this milestone uh, from Chris Johnston on X, he said, John Tavares has mo- more goals, assists, points and games played than any other member of the 2009 draft class. So, yeah, John Tavares. I mean, I think, you know, <laughs> people are complaining still about him and his salary. And yes, he is like a little bit diminished, but only a little bit. The guy is still a performer and still incredibly consistent. Um, I'm pretty sure that when he signed that contract, we were all thinking that his play would be much more diminished than, than it is that, you know, he would just be a shell of himself. And he's definitely not that he even showed that too. Like, you know, when he went to play for, for Canada at the world championships, Um, he's still a contributor I think he has uh, evolved his game and I think he's going to continue to do that. Um, I still think he's got more to give and let's face it, he's not going anywhere. Uh, so I expect, you know, he'll perform just the way he has, has done um, as a leaf. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah. I mean, I remember the, the milestone part of it, like where they had the ceremony for mm-hmm. it and everything that was, that was great. Like it was, a, yeah, it's 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 a special moment, and very f- few players have um have reached that thousand game milestone. And I just remember too when we went to Sweden and we actually got the chance to to talk to him and mm-hmm. um and interview interview him quickly. But he was just he was the way he was. He's a very personable guy. Like he seemed to be like he was taking his time and to talk to us and uh, I don't know he just made you feel comfortable and mm-hmm. but he's the captain of the Toronto Maple Leafs and um yeah it's uh he's he's been a consistent player for the Leafs since he's come here he chose to come here he loves being a Leaf and mm-hmm. um and yeah I still wish that when it comes to the captaincy I still wish that he would Kind of hang, hand it over to Austin Matthews, but I know that's not going to happen. Um, but, but he probably will on the way out. Like I, I could yeah. see a situation where he resigns with the team for lesser dollars, right. and then takes a lesser role as well on the team and and passes it on. Then, which it would be a fitting time to do it to yeah. pass he, the torch. He played kind of great. Thing. He played great too with uh, Team Canada, like in the World Championships. Yeah, like that's he what I a, said too. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, so going on to number two, it's uh, Ilya Samsonov's turnaround uh, from epi- from our episode 12, what we said back then. Since the new year and since being recalled after being put on waiver, Sammy has a 6-2-0 and record in eight games and looks to be getting back to form that we saw last season. He ended up with a record of 18-5-2 and in 25 games um, after his return on January 14th with a goals against average of 2.70 and a save percentage of 0.904. It was an incredible turnaround for someone who most thought had played his last game in the NHL, which is, mm-hmm. it's very, very true. I mean, um, yeah, I, I think it was his dad that he talked to that really kind of set him straight um, to, to say, you know, you can, you're an NHL goalie and you, you just need to go out and, 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 play your game so uh, but it was incredible because yeah in december it was just like get this guy mm-hmm. out of here like far away from here it, yeah for it, his it, own sake is yeah, really what yeah. people were thinking yeah you and know the way the leafs handled it was really mm-hmm. interesting as well like and it worked sort of thing like mm-hmm. they just told him not to come with the team on the road trip mm-hmm. do whatever you need to do um stay with your family because he has a young a young boy i think is a boy that he had and he's um yeah and 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 then when they came back and and in january he he's he was a little bit shaky there was like a game or two in in between that w- weren't uh where he he didn't have such great games but he still he pulled it together pulled the focus he battled through it and yeah and he he did uh he did the job for us um in the end 
Yeah. And sadly, I, I don't think he'll be back next year. I'd be really surprised if that happens. Uh, but it's just a little th- bit too much work to, yeah, uh, yeah. for the team to handle. Uh, but I think he did enough to warrant another team looking at him. So yeah. I don't think he's finished up in the NHL um, at all. All right. So coming in at number one, uh, we are lumping together the NHL events that evolved the Leafs, um, namely the Global Series in Sweden and the All-Star festivities that we had in Toronto. Uh, we discussed these Hallmark events in episodes seven and 11, respectively. Um, yeah. So we picked this for a, a few different reasons, both personally and because they were Incredible events for the Leafs. First of all, in Sweden, the Leafs uh, won that tournament. So that was exciting. Uh, Willie emerged as a rock star. And then personally for us to be there and be able to see behind the scenes, as Chris mentioned, we interviewed John Tavares. We got to see the player interviews. Uh, we got to see uh, basically how hockey is embraced in in Sweden. But uh, that... Um, you know, hockey is everywhere there. And, um, of course, Nylander, like the lineups just to get his autograph were like, you know, down blocks for, for kilometers. Um, and then of course the all star festivities here in Toronto. Um, it was an incredible showcase, uh, for, uh, many of our Leaf players and, uh, also for our city. And again, we got to participate in that as well. And, um, and, you know, the, our team, uh, did, did well. Um, so, um, both, you know, both of them, yeah, for both yeah. events, like we really, we yeah. really showed up well. Uh, Willie scoring that overtime winning goal in Sweden. Mm-hmm. Um, and his family was there and it was just, it was, I think it was, it's, it's special for him, obviously, being, and the, all the Swedish players um, mm-hmm. from all the teams and uh, like for Detroit and Minnesota and Ottawa um, that were in that, uh, that tournament there. But it, it was, um, yeah, it was interesting because we had never been to Europe too, from our, our own personal experience for seeing how the people there love. It was great to interact with the fans there too, and, and see how they love the game. And um, yeah, so that was, that was really good. And then the all-star game. Yeah, it was, um, that was more fun. I would guess it would say, right. But it was, it was good. The NHL really did a good, um, like with the events that they had and, um, and, making a connection with the fans and the players and that, that it was, um, it was, it was a definitely a good, good show there. So um, yeah, hopefully, I don't know. I don't know when the, the Leafs will have another global series or if they'll, we were I'm thinking hoping about, it's, it's yeah. a while from now because <laughs> as much as like, I have to say that, you know, we picked these uh, cause you really wanted to go to Mexico though. <laughs> yeah, I would, I would do that. Uh, but no, I don't want it to be next year or the year after that, you know, maybe, maybe a few years down the road because uh, as, as great as these were, I mean, we have to choose these because we don't have anything else to wrap our, our, our hearts around right yeah. now. So, um, and I do think that it does distract from the mission when you are putting so much time and attention into these, these types of events. And so that's a, that's a big deal to go, you know, cross the pond to Europe. It's a disruption in your normal routines. Um, and, and the way the Leafs are followed for all of these things, it, it's just so much more than a lot of other teams. It takes away from, from everything. And, and really, the NHL just does use the Toronto Maple Leafs when they need to for these things. You know what? They really suck every little bit out of out of the organization. You know, as much as everybody loves us, right? Loves oh, our team. <laughs> yeah, so much. <laughs> yeah. But so, anyways, I'm looking forward to having a little bit more of a down year next year, where they can just concentrate on the business at hand and you know, focus on, on just winning games and going far into June. And that's what Craig Berube definitely wants to. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) Anyway, one last thing on, on this, um, just honorable mention, uh, for the, the highlight reel is 
all year Austin Matthews. And I don't think we need to say more than that. <laughs> all right. So as much as these highlight reel moments were positives, we know it, it, it or at least have hopes that things will change. Um, we have a new head coach in Craig Berube, as we mentioned, and now the focus is on making this roster better. So we're going to talk about this in our third period segment. All right, so the 2024 NHL draft is coming up on June 28th and 29th, and um, it'll be held at the Sphere in Vegas, which is going to be cool. Um, and the Leafs right now are actually, they actually have a first round pick. <laughs> I, I, I had to remind I think it's 23rd, 23rd overall or something. Yeah. Yeah. They have a first round pick, 23rd overall, a fourth, and then they have three fifth round picks and two seventh round picks. So, um, I don't know. Do you think that they'll trade their first round pick? Uh, I I don't think so. I think that they're gonna they're gonna need something really special to come across uh, or a phone call um, at the draft for them to to want to move that. Um, Cause and have- it could involve uh, Marner, but I actually think if you're trading Marner, I think Marner in a first is too much. I would potentially, you know, throw in a later pick if they want to go that way, because I think you're getting Mitch Marner. What the hell do you need? He's already a first rounder. What do you need? Like a, a you know, a, right. a potential first round, you know, the, star in the for, later round of the, in the later the round. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's, that's basically like a second anyways, which we don't have. Yeah, but what they really need though, because of the lack of, early picks like they have nothing mm-hmm. in the second and they have nothing in the third like they really need to hit on these ones if, if absolutely uh, assuming they keep it so um just a couple that we looked at i guess a couple of um, players that we looked at as, as possibilities for drafting at number 23 um we looked at defensemen because we thought that's what we need in the organization the last yeah, and, and, of- and that's what they haven't done well developing right like we yeah. just don't have any any real strong candidates on the back end that yeah. seem to be able to make the leap you know yeah so the first one actually that we has gotten quite a bit of uh, attention lately is um it's a norwegian defenseman stian sol solberg sorry if i mispronounce your first name <laughs> but um but yeah so he's a six foot two 205 pound defenseman 18 years old he played in the top norwegian league uh with valrenga and had nine points in 17 playoff games so he, apparently he played really well in in their playoffs he was actually interviewed by 30 teams at the nhl scouting combine just recently so um and he was invited to toronto for additional face time to so they were obviously the least were interested in um and finding out more about him. Did you mention like how what what his size is? Yeah, he's six two, two hundred and five yeah. okay. pounds. Yeah. And um yeah, and he played actually for Norway in this year's world championships. Um mm-hmm. and he was asked who he thought who who was the toughest player you faced? And he said John Tavares. Good, good answer. <laughs> yeah, so then I thought that's probably that's probably why he got the extra face time with the Leafs, right? Mm. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe a reason. I don't know, <laughs> right? But uh, I thought that was interesting that uh, that the that the kid he said that he just because he mentioned how strong he was, like on in. Well, I guess obviously being a for- JT being the forward coming in on him as a defense young defenseman mm-hmm. like that, right? Like that, yeah. I could see that having a uh, impression on him. And then um, the other defenseman that has, um, I guess, jumped up a little bit in the uh, in the draft rankings is EJ Emery. Um, so he's from the U.S. National Development Program. And Brad Trelliving, we always know, is looking for size on the back end. Um, so uh, Emery is more of a shutdown demon. Um, so he's a right shot as well, which we know mm-hmm. how valuable those are Absolutely. for everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, six foot three, he can play big minutes, has a long reach. And for his size, apparently his skating is above average. Um, so they, So that's one plus. But the only thing is, though, on the offensive side and... I guess um, distributing the puck like with the with the play offensively is it's not his forte, let's just say. Mm-hmm. But 
um, he's more of a stay at home guy, but then hey, it takes all different kinds to make up a team, right? Yeah. Yeah. But then he could be, he's only 18, right? Mm-hmm. So he could be as, as you develop him, obviously, and other offensive defensemen that we have, like Toby Nemo, let's just say, mm-hmm. like maybe that'll match up well, right? Like with, yeah, exactly. Um, with another offensive defenseman. So, um, so yeah. Haley Wickenheiser will, will work with him and get the most out of him, I'm sure. Yeah. And the, I guess the comparison they gave was, um, Brandon Carlo of the Bruins. Okay. As, mm-hmm. which they, they said that it's a, a comparison for him. But yeah. But, Again, like we don't watch these kids, Syl and I, um, every day. We, we, we read about all these articles from the NHL's, um, central scouting and yes. on, on Twitter and that. So we're depending on the experts. Yeah. We depend on the experts. These are the two guys that they say on defense. We're only giving our opinion the fact that we, well, most people, fans, I think, think know that we need defense in our mm-hmm. prospect pool. We don't, we don't have a yeah. lot. And, um, yeah, but we're leaving it to West Clark. <laughs> to yes. figure it out. Yep. Um, and he did a pretty good job last year. So um, I'm, I'm going to trust that he, he and his staff know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. All right. So after the draft comes free agency on July 1st, uh, we think there will be a lot of player movement this year, actually. So, of course, there is already talk of some tampering going on, and it's going to be interesting to see who stays with their current team or who moves to a new address. Uh, so we've talked about the Leaf UFAs quite a bit in previous shows. Um, so I'll just quickly mention them. So we've got Bertuzzi, Domi, uh, TJ Brody, Joel Edmondson, Mark Giordano, and Ilya Labushkin. Um, all UFAs, uh, and also our three goalies, uh, Ilya Samsonov, Matt Murray, and Martin Jones are also, um, able to find new addresses if they so choose. Uh, so, um, yeah, so I, I actually picked out, um, I guess on Puppedia because now we're looking at Puppedia. Yes. And, uh, yes. Not cap friendly. Yep. That <laughs> is now our site of choice. Yeah. Yeah. Since the cap Washington Capitol took cap friendly away from us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but the one UFA that I thought would be a good fit, and I've mentioned this before in a previous show is uh, Chandler Stevenson of the Vegas Golden Knights. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, I just think he'd fit in good because like we were talking about with Tavares, you were mentioning that, you know, he's he's obviously still a, a, a good player for us, but he's not, let's just say for the minutes and I guess the hard parts of the game being a second line center, he may be better to be on the wing or be put in the third in the mm-hmm. third hole. Um but um Chandler Stevenson is a second line center, thirty years old. Um and the only issue is that the Bruins apparently are interested in him as well. So that could be a bidding kind of war there that most likely we can't get into because the Bruins have a lot of cap space, I think, available for more. Yeah, more than us, that's for sure. That's for sure. Yeah. But mm-hmm. um, he's averaged, Stevenson has averaged 60 points per season uh, over the last three years. Um, he's a reliable second line center. He played with Mark Stone and Ivan Barbashev, so he obviously played uh, with some good players there in Vegas. Um, but he's obviously, they're saying that he's projected to to get a five-year deal worth five and a half um, mm. million. That's what they're, they're projecting to say that that's what he wants. Um, but yeah. I, I think he's a, he's a good option because we need center. We need help at center too. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And then the goalie, um, I actually picked this. I wasn't too keen on it at first. I've heard a lot on um, like Jamie McLennan on TSN. He's talked about this Laurent Brassois quite a bit. And, um, and, but now I'm, I'm kind of, getting closer to being sold on him because he, he's 31 years old going into his 11th season. So as long as Joseph Wall, that we can make sure that he's a health, like healthy, <laughs> at least for to be able to play um, at least 35 to 40 games anyways, because Brossois, I mean, he played with the Jets last season and for goalies who played 20 or more games, he was first in save percentage at 9.2 or 0.927 and goals against average 2.00. So he only played the 23 games, but he's looking he's looking to play more games. 
right? So that's mm-hmm. a perfect match there, I would say, because we need him, we would need him to play at least 30, 30 to 35 games, let's just say. Mm-hmm. And then as long as Wall can stay healthy, mm-hmm. right? It's a bit of a And gamble. then we, we do need like a, a, a third and, you know, Martin Jones, by all accounts, is still willing to come back and play that role. But also Matt Murray could fill in that in that yeah, way no. as well. <laughs> I was hoping you wouldn't mention, she mentioned his name early, off off the air, but I was like, no. <laughs> I I don't necessarily want him to to be on our team either. But, um, but yeah, so like as long as they got a good viable third option, because yeah, like we can't have that situation where, where we've got just no, no coverage because Wall is a, a wild card. I really hope that they're going to work on his strength over the summer, which I'm, I'm sure that they are. Um, but um, yeah, it's yeah. kind of a gamble and you don't really goalie position. I mean, we're seeing it in the cup final now, how important. Oh, it's huge. Like how huge, huge it is right between special teams and goaltending like that. Mm-hmm. That's, that's yeah. You can't make a difference. mistake in that department. Yeah. You know, yeah, so I don't know. Anyway, so, for me, um, one one guy that kind of popped out at me that could be had, you know, because I I looked mostly at at center, um, depth and uh, defenseman because we really need those. Uh, a guy that I know that uh, uh, Treliving likes is is Tyler Toffoli. Um, he's um, his cap hit right now is four point two five. So I think that he could be probably had for around, he signed a four year deal before. And, you know, I think that they're kind of looking at that window with Matthews, you know, the four year mark. So, yeah. you know, for, yeah. you could get him for, for like four years or less potentially, um, for a decent price. Um, he played but pretty to, well last year. To Foley would be doing a tour of Canada then with all the teams pretty much. That he played. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then for defensemen, um, I think, you know, Zadorov is still linked to our team. Um, uh, Chris Tanov is also a guy that is still linked to our team. I prefer, I would prefer they not go for Tana because the guy, yes, he's a bulldog, but he gets, he gets hurt all the time. Yeah. And, yeah, and we need he, somebody who's going to be in the lineup. It's the health that we're worried about. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and and another guy that that I kind of thought of too is like the Sean Monahan. I mean, he's a local guy. I don't know if he'd want to come back here, but uh, that might be a good fit, you know, to play, you know, with say JT. Not necessarily second. They would still need to get somebody who's a, a good second um, center. I, I think. Know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, and of course, Brett Pesci is also. With that, they would have to probably trade, um, and there has been rumors too to be trading like David Kampf or Callie mm, Youngkirk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, both of those um, players. Yeah. Like one of them would probably have to go, right, to start with that with those rebuilding those of, types of guys. Yeah. But I, I like your um, your Chandler Stevens Stevenson idea. Yeah, yeah. So I um, think he would be a good fit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because Vegas is basically screwed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and from- actually, that's but you want to deal with with teams that are Finally. basically up against it, you know. <laughs> yeah. Finally, right after just winning yeah. the Stanley Cup after like mm-hmm. being in the league for less than. And the thing is, is they they have to rework their team as well. Like now they are in a bit of a in, in not a rebuild, but definitely a rework because it didn't work for them last year. They played their same game with the LTIR. Who knows how long they're even going to be allowed to do that kind of thing. And, and that's, that's, that's not actually going to help your team in the long run. If you're going to keep having to do that to be able to, you know, be able to field a team and you're not going to be ha- have success that way. They got lucky the first time, caught lightning in a bottle. It didn't work this year. So yeah, that's for anyway. sure. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, um, so the Stanley Cup is still to be re- awarded as we do this show on the Sunday. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, they're going to be playing on Tuesday night back down in, in Sunrise, Florida. Pretty sure the Florida Panthers, though, I think they're going to finish the, the job in five games. Mm-hmm. Um, and like any team, they, they'd love to win it at home, right? Like do, that's, you that's, that, do you think that teams actually 
back off? Or is it the no. kind of thing that it got away I don't from think- them and they're like, uh, let's not push it? I don't know. I don't know. The only thing because that- I just found it interesting that the the night before as well, basically the the Dallas Mavericks did the same thing. They they just yes. killed Boston, yeah. and I'm like, really? Like <laughs> to me, I kind of wonder is is it that they finally just took you know one too many games to figure it out, or like what's the deal there? Because obviously these teams have it in them, or they wouldn't have you know beaten them to that extent you know, both in both yeah. basketball and hockey. I it just bothers me. Yeah, I do have to say, like, with Bobrovsky, like, I mean, he looked a little bit shaken there when he was taken out of the, like, mm-hmm. more and more he's pulled him. I well, know. I mean, I suppose that is the slight worry because that happened in the final last year, too. He just kind of lost his mojo, and then it, w- then it was over. Yeah, yeah. So. so I guess we'll see what happens, but, um, but yeah, I think that you're right. I, I would be surprised if they don't finish them off on Tuesday, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I saw that they had a big, uh, rush trying to get, I guess, their family and friends up to Edmonton or something mm-hmm. like, like for in, in case they did win, but, uh, yeah. turned out that they didn't have to worry about that. So yeah, we'll see what happens. Mm hmm. Yeah, so for our next show, the Stanley Cup will already have been awarded. The NHL draft and free agency will be done. And that means there will be a lot more Leaf news to talk about. So a reminder, you can listen to our show on the Believe Network or hit the follow button on Apple, Spotify or your favorite app so you don't miss an episode. Yeah, and also subscribe to our YouTube channel and watch the show there. Uh, throughout the NHL season, we also post a lot of video content from games we attend at Scotia, Scotiabank Arena uh, for you to check out. And when we go on on the road with on the road and Chris and Sill, we take road trips uh, during the season, so you can check out uh, our video content from that. So. We also would love to hear from you and please consider leaving us a, re- a rating or a review. So it's e- really easy on Apple or Spotify and it's important for our show to get recognized as a source for Leafs content. And we thank you for taking the time. Another way to help us out is by visiting our Kofi page at Kofi.com. You can follow us there. And if you choose to, you can support us by buying us a coffee. Any donation goes towards helping us produce the show and making it even better for you. You can find the link to our Kofi page on our show notes or in any of our social media profile pages. And as always, thank you to our healthcare workers and first responders for everything that they do. We thank you as always for listening and watching Ladies Talking Leafs presented by Bet Online. Till next time, and we'll see you on the patio. Go Leafs, go. go. Leafs, go. Do you believe?